Hello and welcome. I'm Pater Nuez Makel. This is Rappler Talk. With us today is the Philippines' new Acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Enrique Manalo. Thank you for joining us, Secretary Manalo. Well, great pleasure to be here and speaking with you this morning. Secretary Manalo, can you give us a bit of background about yourself? Who is uh, Enrique Manalo? Well, Enrique Manalo is uh, graduated from the uh, University of the Philippines uh, with a uh, B, uh, master's in economics. Uh, I, I majored in economics. And then um, sometime uh, early in my uh, life, I decided uh, to take a crack at the uh, joining the foreign office. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and uh, probably one of the factors being that both my parents were uh, diplomats. So uh, I suppose that had uh, some influence on my decision. Sir, you mentioned that both of your parents were uh, are diplomats. Yes. Um, can you tell us more about how it was like to grow up in a household of diplomats? Well, uh, for one thing, uh, every day you're hearing all about uh, the Foreign Office, you're hearing about uh, issues in the department, uh, hearing about uh, meetings in foreign countries. So. Uh, after many years of hearing that, uh, even though you don't maybe fully understand everything, it begins to grow on you and uh, you naturally uh, develop a curiosity uh, to see how it really feels to be involved in it. So after many years of being uh, of absorbing everything and of course meeting people sometimes from the foreign office or, or from other foreign services, it certainly uh, creates uh, an interest in seeing how it feels to be really in, in the uh, foreign service. Sir, your father is Ambassador Armando Manalo. Yes, the late and uh, ambassador. Yes. Your mother is uh, Ambassador Rosario yes, Manalo. Yes, I, your, your father was a journalist, as I read. Yes, yes, writer and, and a journalist. Yes. And your mother was the first uh, female career diplomat in the Philippines. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that, but uh, certainly uh, she uh, has been um, involved in uh, many uh, affairs uh, involving uh, women's rights, etc. But uh, I know she was the first uh, woman diplomat. What was your uh, best recollection as a kid growing up? Um, an anecdote perhaps that could uh, illustrate how it was like uh, to grow up in a household of ambassadors. Oh, well, uh, sometimes over dinner they would debate on certain issues and uh, I couldn't take sides. <laughs> so I have to be uh, neutral uh, but sometimes they would discuss issues in you know on uh, foreign policy issues or issues uh, in the foreign office so uh, you begin to pick up uh, and I know many incidents many times over dinner we wouldn't be discussing and really uh, I'd be picking up their views and, and how uh, old were you when you first oh, well, realized that they were debating oh teenager like that teenager uh, yeah 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 and uh, so very interesting uh, you pick up uh, and, and learn tidbits about various issues Sometimes uh, I remember debating uh, on the Middle East. Or really? Yes, yes. Over so dinner? Yeah, a friendly debate. <laughs> <laughs> and who would win? Huh? Uh, Thai. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's, uh, it, those are things I remember as uh, growing up. And you lived in different countries? Uh, well, uh, I didn't really join them in all their assignments. I, I was mainly in the United States, uh, in the UN, in New York. Right. Mm. What was the best lesson that you learned from your parents, either your father or mother, that you're now uh, able to use as a diplomat? Well, I think the best thing I could learn is to, to respect the opinions of others, to listen to others as best as you can, even if you may not agree with them, and to try and uh, see uh, their perspective. So even if you don't agree, you might be able to find ways of uh, reaching some kind of common ground. Mm. And you're able to use that here at the uh, DFA? Uh, I think we have to use it every day. <laughs> but yes, I think that's one of the, the uh, things we try to do. But at the same time, you also uh, learn that uh, if you have certain positions, uh, you know, you must try and stick to them in a way that, uh, that pushes forward whatever your interests are. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, um, I understand that all three of you, your father and your mother and yourself, mm -hmm. You have all experienced being posted in one place as ambassador, ambassador yes. to Belgium. Yes, uh, my father was uh, ambassador to Belgium. Uh, my mother was also 
at different times. My mother was also ambassador to Belgium and the EU. And then I, uh, five or six years ago, I was uh, appointed ambassador to Belgium and uh, also to the EU. So, uh, and Luxembourg. So all three of us had actually served as, uh, in that capacity. Was there pressure? Well, uh, I would say pressure, but certainly they have uh, reputations uh, you have to develop to. But in the end, uh, each is his own. Uh, but certainly, uh, yeah, I think uh, they did well. So naturally, try and do your best uh, and uh, using them as models. In one of the news articles that came out yesterday uh, by Micaela del Calliar of GMA, uh, it was mentioned uh, that, uh, I quote from the article, Manalo is a quiet but seasoned diplomat who has dealt with diplomatic crises, including the South China Sea disputes with impressive calmness. How do you do it as a diplomat? What are your guideposts in dealing with crises like this? Well, first, uh, it's important to uh, analyze the situation and see what really, is, what are the available facts. It's, uh, not a wise idea to react immediately upon uh, hearsay. So it's good to have that, to talk with people who are uh, in the know and uh, get their ideas and see how we can react. Because many times uh, it's important that you have a, a clear idea of what the situation is so you can make an appropriate response. So as much as possible, uh, you try and get as much information and facts as possible before, um, before doing anything. Otherwise, it might only make the situation uh, worse. When you were growing up, were there uh, disputes or conflicts that you were involved in and uh, your parents had to use their diplomatic uh, abilities, their diplomatic skills, or even at home? Well, I think we were always using our diplomatic skills. Uh, so uh, they were using theirs. Uh, but uh, I think I uh, was able to pick up uh, some tips just from observing that. and. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, part of the work of the diplomat is to, uh, to uh, really probably one of the hardest things is to, uh, is to listen to the views of others, especially if you don't uh, agree with them. And uh, it's, that's important in trying to come up with uh, important uh, ways of uh, finding solutions to any problem. Yeah, especially nowadays uh, in uh, social media, we can see people debating, uh, yes. people are uh, polarized. What are the things that people can learn from diplomats like you, especially in the polarized social media world? Well, everyone is entitled to their opinion, their views. Uh, I think our job here is really uh, to see how we can find uh, areas of common ground. Because I think, uh, I think in many of these uh, disagreements, there always are some areas where they seem to be in agreement. And uh, it's in finding those areas, once you found them, then you can build on them. And once uh, you build on them, then, then you open opportunities now for having some kind of an agreement or understanding. You may not agree on every issue, but the key always is for those with uh, diff differing views to keep on talking. Because uh, anyone with a differing view, I'm sure, uh, has at heart the good of whatever position they're espousing. And I think uh, you have to realize that. So the key is to find out and build on where you can actually agree. Given those uh, principles, oh. I'd like us to move forward to specific issues that the sure. Philippines is dealing with. Uh, first of all, the South China Sea issue. What is the official position on the South China Sea? Well, I think the official position of the Philippines has not changed. Uh, we, we firmly believe that, uh, and we recognize that uh, there are disputed areas in the South China Sea, but the important thing is to uh, ensure that whatever differences exist, they be resolved peacefully uh, in accordance with the rule of law, and that uh, we should all seek to avoid measures that would escalate tensions, because the, the idea is uh, we need to avoid any, any uh, conflict or any rising tension in the South China Sea. Uh, who owns the disputed islands in the West Philippine Sea? Well, there are many. We, we, we own some. Uh, there are other claimants. And uh, that's the issue why it's important that uh, to resolve these issues, they have to be done in an atmosphere of, uh, of uh, peace and understanding, but at the same time in accordance with the rule of law. And we will not um, move away from that position. Uh, we feel that's the only way that you can resolve it. You cannot resolve disputes uh, through coercion or uh, 
through um, uh, means which uh, tend to uh, escalate tension. So we're fully committed to finding solutions on that basis. How would you define an independent foreign policy, especially in relation to our ties with the U.S. and China? Independent foreign policy uh, really means that uh, in the case of the Philippines, for example, we will deal with countries on the basis of our national interests and, and also uh, on the basis of friendship if they wish to be friends with us. And uh, if we are partners, uh, we're not going to be partners with one country at the expense of others, but we will seek to engage all countries uh, in a manner which uh, is consistent with our uh, interests and our laws. And I think they will be doing the same. So the whole idea of this is that we are not dependent on any single country or any group of countries, but we will um, deal with countries on the basis of uh, our interests and uh, also not at the expense of other partners. So it won't be a, a zero sum, it will be a zero plus, uh, zero, a positive sum uh, approach in our relationship with countries. On uh, human rights, how does the Philippines respond to uh, international feedback on alleged human rights abuses? Well, naturally, uh, first, on any alleged human rights abuses, uh, the, Philippines, uh, the Philippine government uh, launches quickly an investigation. Because as you know, the Philippines is fully committed to so many human rights conventions. Uh, in fact, the Philippines has been known to champion the quite a number of human rights issues. We have been, in fact, elected to many bodies in the UN to chair. We were one of the original members of the Human Rights Council in its very first session, and that was recognition of our commitment. Of course, there are, every country has uh, human rights abuses, and, and it's the job of every government, especially the Philippines, to investigate them. But at the same time, the Philippines has done quite a lot to advance the cause of human rights for women, for children, and I think uh, we are fully committed to all those conventions that we have signed. Mr. Secretary, people are still complaining about uh, passports, how uh, long it takes to uh, book uh, passport appointment schedules. What are your initial plans? Well, sir, our plans is to try and uh, ensure that we don't get any complaints. But no, we are going to be addressing this issue. It's constantly being addressed and we are trying to find ways of, uh, of addressing these concerns. Uh, of course, there are so many applicants now, and so it's certainly we have our, our, our machinery which has to be improved. But I think we've instituted already a number of changes. And in fact, in a few days, I'll be discussing with our people how we can further improve this. So I just want to assure everyone that uh, this is something we are looking at on a daily basis. And the, our whole objective is to try and, and avoid unnecessary delays. Sir, um, what are your um, initial plans in general for the DFA? Well, I want to ensure that the DFA uh, and our people uh, continue to uh, undertake our um, functions and our responsibilities uh, in a very professional way. And I want to assure everyone that uh, we, are, uh, we have hit the ground running and I think that, uh, uh, that there's been a very, very smooth transition and we are going to prepare the way for the, whoever might be the next uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs. We want to be sure that uh, the department uh, maintains its reputation of, uh, of professionalism and dedication. And I want to ensure that in all, all aspects of our work, uh, we will be continuing uh, to do our job. Uh, Mr. Secretary, there are reports that um, you might be uh, um, replaced as a, a Secretary of Foreign Affairs in a few months. What can you do in a few months? Well, we will try, and as I said, to continue our work. That's the best that we can do, and then to uh, uh, follow the uh, president's instructions, and just to ensure that whoever may come here uh, next, uh, hopefully everything will be in place, and that uh, there won't be too much of a, a problem in any transition. So that's what we're aiming for, to make it uh, as smooth as possible. Will there be major changes in the DFA under your watch? Uh, well, I wouldn't say major changes, but we, we have to study and see uh, what can be improved. Let's put it this way, not, not changes, but how we can improve things that can be improved. And certainly to, uh, to uh, if there have been any um, uh, mistakes, to see how they can be corrected. But as I said, uh, I'm basically um, aiming at really uh, ensuring that we continue to do the work that the DFA, I think, uh, is, is uh, mandated to do. And we will try and do that uh, the best way we can. 
Sir, um, my, my last question, what mm -hmm. would be your uh, message to the Filipino people, especially because there have been uh, uh, negative reports about the DFA in uh, the past few days? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure of the negative reports, but I just want to ensure that uh, the DFA is, uh, as I said, fully committed to uh, undertake all its functions and responsibilities. And of course, our function here is not only to protect uh, the interests of the country, but to uh, also protect the interests of the Filipino people. And I can assure everyone that uh, this is a, a guiding light of the DFA, especially uh, uh, while I'm here. But even beyond that, uh, I just want to ensure everyone that uh, we have a very professional core here. And we are uh, certainly uh, determined to uh, undertake our functions and responsibilities uh, in the best way we can. As the son of uh, two ambassadors, what would you like to tell your parents? Well, I now that you are the <laughs> Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Well, my father has passed away, but well, my mom. Well, just to thank them for uh, all the tips they gave me, and that uh, I hope that uh, I haven't disappointed them. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with uh, Secretary Enrique Manalo of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pater Douglas Maquel.